All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another networking video. What are we talking about? We're talking about math, and specifically network math. And today's calculation is the checksum. Now, where can you find the checksum? Well, a lot of protocols have a checksum. But our big three that we use today that have the checksum are going to be the Internet Protocol and then TCP and UDP. And so uh, all of them are going to have a, a checksum on the header. So it's just a calculation on the header, at least for IP. Now, sometimes the calculation for checksum is also on the pseudo header, which includes a part of the previous uh, packet. So in the case of TCP and UDP, they include the pseudo header. Now, one thing that's going to be important to us in a little bit is that at the start of the calculation, the checksum is set to zero, which sort of makes sense because if you were trying to include the checksum in the calculation, then it would be constantly changing as you did the, the, uh, the calculation. Okay, so we set it to zero to start. Now, as a reminder, RFC 791, the Internet Protocol, defines the checksum as the 16-bit ones complement of the ones complement sum of all the 16-bit words in the header. Now, I'm going to do an example for you, so we'll see exactly what that means. But the important thing here is that we're using the complement and we're doing the ones complement sum. Now, if you forgot how to do the ones complement, I did another video on that one, and so take a peek at the ones complement. Now, at the top here, we have the, the pseudo header. And so that includes part of the IP header. So we're going to do a checksum for TCP and UDP. We're going to include the source and destination address, the protocol field, and then the length of the datagram from the IP header. So in this particular case, this is the image from the TCP uh, RFC, but uh, UDP does the same thing. So I've got some snips from RFC 9293. Remember, that was the one that put all the TCP stuff together. So again, the ones complement of the ones complement sum and the pseudo header. And the pseudo header is 96 bits for IPv4. Now, there are a couple of things to remember that we want to do some even division here. We're doing 16 bit, and so we pad it out if necessary. And then lastly, if the checksum is actually computed to zero, it's transmitted as all ones. Now, we don't see all zeros used all the time, but sometimes it's used for testing or for some initial connection. So every once in a while, you'll see a checksum of zero or a checksum of all ones, and they're different sizes for IPv4 and IPv6. Let's do an example from a DHCP packet. Now, here is a DHCP packet that I just pulled from the, from the net, right? And so this is, I think, one I grabbed in lab. And so we can see that right here, the top red box, that is the IP header checksum. That's the one that we're going to do. And then here is another checksum in the same packet, but it's for the UDP header and the, and the pseudo header. So one packet, two different checksums. Now, if we take a look at the IP header checksum, we can see that it's 0x78AE. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that it's in hexadecimal, that value. And so when we convert from hexadecimal, we're going to get a binary number. And so four hex characters is two bytes or 16 bits. And that's what we're going to use for the 16-bit ones complement of the ones complement sum. But in order to do the example, we do need the hexadecimal. And so if you're in Wireshark, you can go to the bottom and then grab the hex. And that is what I've shown you right up here. So this is the hexadecimal representation of the same DHCP packet from the previous slide. And there, right in the middle, is 78AE. Now the, the portion that's highlighted is the IP header. And the IP header is 20 bytes. So it's 16 bytes across, and then we got an extra two right here and an extra two right here. Now I got a little caution on this one because I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it step by step, but you sort of have to really um, grab what happens on the first step in order to to follow it all the way through. Okay. So the beginning part of the IP header is 4500. Now, here is that 4500, and I've converted it to binary right there. And then here is 0240, that's also right there. 
and we've converted that to binary. So now what we're going to do is we're doing a sum, right? So we're going to add these two 16-bit words together, and this is what we get all the way on the right. Now we're going to take this value and stick it all the way back here on the left and add it to the next set of values, which is 0, 0, and that's pretty simple, right? We blast that out like that, and then we get the same value. And then we grab the next 16-bit word, and we take our result, put it back over here on the left. Here's our next 16-bit word. So now we're up to this point right here. Okay, so we're taking our result again, and there's 4011. So we're, we've advanced to right here, okay? And we break that out into binary, we do the addition. Now we get to the checksum field, and that is right here. And so I've got that in red because what do we do with the checksum to begin with? We put it all to zeros. And so we get this result. So, so far this seems pretty simple. We're just adding our initial result to a whole bunch of zeros. But it gets a, it gets a little more complicated here in a minute. So we're going to continue our, our work here. And now the next 16-bit word is all zeros again. There it is. Add, move it over. Another one of all zeros right there. And then here comes the magic, right? So now we've progressed all the way here. We're almost done. We've got two more 16-bit words to do. So we take our result and we add it to FFFF. And then... We expand the binary and there we have it. But we'll notice that all of a sudden we're not dealing with 16 bits anymore. We're dealing with 20 bits and really 17 because we have overflow, right? Because we did this addition in this place right here and now we've got overflow. So the magic of the checksum now is that we're gonna now take this value, this one right here and wrap it around and we're gonna put it right over there. So the result for the next one, right, we can see that we, if our 16-bit word was right here, what we're just going to do is stick it right there. So now we're back to 16 bits over here, but we did a wrap where this was 0, 0, 0, 0 before. It is now 0, 0, 0, 1. We do the next addition of all Fs, break that out into binary, and we have another wrap that happens. So now what we're going to do is take this one, Stick it right back over there, and that is our wrap right there. And that is the final value of our sum. But now we're going to take the ones complement, which is this right here. So 1, 0, 0, 0 is 0, 1, 1, 1, and so on. And then let's convert that back to hexadecimal, and huzzah! 78 AE is our calculated header checksum. And there you have it. 16-bit ones complement of the ones complement sum of the header. Well, this has been network math, the checksum. Now, if we had been doing TCP or UDP, remember that we would have had to add the pseudo header in there. And a couple of fun facts. There are other checksums like the MD5. The one that we've just done, the ones complement sum, is also sometimes referred to or as is related to modulo 65 535 arithmetic. Now 65 535 is significant because in 2 bytes or 16 bits you have 65,536 possible values all zeros to all ones. So the all ones value is 65,535. Thanks for watching. I love it when a plan comes together and we're actually correct. Like and subscribe if I helped. And hey, may those packets always reach their destinations, especially if they've got correct checksums.